taking your own teammate out of jealousy, or a coach indecently touching his own players. Women's football has seen some crazy moments over the years, and that's why I'm making a list of the top most inappropriate moments in the women's game. And it doesn't get any worse than Ada Hegerberg. Ada Hegerberg is a legend. Multiple Champions Leagues, Golden Boots, and a record goal scorer for Wolfsburg. She was the GOAT. In 2018, Hegerberg was on a different level after helping her Wolfsburg team reach the Champions League final and winning the Golden Boot. She got the top votes and was announced as the first official winner of the Ballon d'Or Feminine. Hagerberg gathered with all the top talent from both the men's and the women's game to receive her award in front of the entire world. And just before climbing off stage, DJ Martin Soldig had one request for her that stunned the entire world. Hey Ada, before you leave, can you twerk? Whoa, I can't believe it. He was legit asking her to twerk on live TV. Hegerberg was clearly disgusted, so she immediately turned the request down before accepting to do a mini twirl later and left the DJ stunned. All over social media, the reactions were the same. Solveig was getting trolled for insulting Hegerberg. He later came out to address the whole situation. I explained to Ada and she told me she understood it was a joke. Nevertheless, my apologies to anyone who may have been offended. Most importantly, congratulations to Ada. But no one was buying it, it was so bad. He even had people from other sports coming out to slaughter him. Just ask Andy Murray. What questions did they ask Mumbapi and Modric? I'd imagine something to do with football. And to everyone who thinks I'm overreacting and it was just a joke, it wasn't. I've been involved in sport my whole life and the level of sexism is unreal. Whoa. When she noticed the level of hate DJ Solvig was getting, she knew she had to come out and address the situation or he'd get massacred online. He came to me afterward and was really sad that it went that way. I didn't really consider it sexual harassment or anything in the moment. I was just happy to do the dance and win the Ballon d'Or. Now, I know she's trying to soften the situation and all, but that's no excuse for DJ Solvig. And I'm pretty sure the organizers won't be inviting Solvig to organize any awards from here on out. The thing is, the reason the DJ was even bold enough to ask Hegerberg to twerk was probably because of the stuff Leo Labonte did that set the internet on fire. Back in 2018, Leo Labonte was on a roll. She was tied in the league for the most assists and had scored the most goals for her club. So coming into this one, she was full of confidence. In the crucial match against Kansas City, the tie was deadlocked heading into the 90th minute until Kansas got a penalty with just seconds left. Both teams knew only someone with enough heart would be able to take the pen in front of the whole stadium and up stepped Labonta, took the kick and boom, she had Kansas running away with all three points. Now the goal was already chaotic enough, but what happened next was astonishing. Labonta paused midway through the celebration and when she started clutching her hamstring, her teammates and even the opposition thought she was injured. And just as the medical team was about to rush onto the field, Labonta made it clear she had planned the entire thing by twerking to celebrate. Now, most of the stadium thought it was pretty cool, but some thought it was really inappropriate for the women's game. And Labonta herself came out to say what really happened. Female soccer players tend to just go all over each other and we love that. But I think we really want to start making it a little more fun and having individual celebrations. So that was sent to me on Twitter and I said, bet if I score the goal and do the celebration, you have to subscribe to Mr. Football and tell your guys about it. Okay, I get Labonta. You're trying to create a new celebration. Now that's cool and all, but it still had people scratching their heads and wondering what in the world is going on. Labonta went viral on social media for a couple of wrong reasons too, because while some were praising her for her bravery to pull it off, it led to some sexist comments from jerks online. Now that's one celebration we won't be seeing on FIFA soon, because it could get into the wrong hands or the wrong controller. Imagine some rando trying to make Halan twerk on FIFA. Now, when it comes to inappropriate comments in the women's game, it's unfortunately still common. But for Didier Ole Nicole, he crossed the line and did some crazy stuff. It made him lose his job. Back in 2022, the PSG female team was on fire. They had recently just ended Lyon's 14-year dominance in the league and were now the top dogs in France. But just one year after their title success and things were about to spin out of control, all thanks to some pretty crazy stuff. Stuff. The scandals around the club were huge, but it became even worse when the news broke out that the PSG female first team manager, Ole Nicole, was suspended. It came as a shock, and as the investigations continued into the circumstances leading up to a suspension, the results were stunning. 
Olay Nicole was being accused of indecent behavior and even went as far as putting a hand on the bum of one of his players and later apologizing for his clumliness. How the heck is that even possible, dude? There is no excuse at all. The PSG hierarchy had no choice but to get involved, and after meeting with the players to discuss the situation, they concluded that the best thing to do was suspend him. The club came out to issue a statement that went like this. The players have been exposed to events that, if proven, would be incompatible with PSG's sporting and human values. Ole Nicole was taken to court, and while they tried to hide the situation, the club decided the best course of action was to let go of Ole Nicole, and the club decided they would relieve him of his duties after the season ended. Now that's a fair hearing. See guys, this was a crazy period for PSG because they've been linked with a bunch of crazy scandals in the women's game. A couple of months before the Ole Nicole scandal, there was another incident threatening to destroy the French club, and this one was all kinds of nuts. Now, brace up guys, because what you're about to see next isn't a thrilling Hollywood blockbuster, but stuff that happened in real life. Kiera Hamurai and Aminita Diallo were both teammates at PSG and for a long time, they acted like they were in a tight bond until the cracks began to fall off and the unraveling was insane. On November 4th, 2021, Hamarawi and Amanita were both on their way home after a team bonding exercise. Amanita was driving that night and after dropping off a teammate who decided to follow them, she was on her way to drop Hamarai off when two masked men suddenly ran them off a curb, approached the car, and began attacking. They dragged Hamurai out of the car and began beating her legs with iron clubs. Surprisingly, Aminata wasn't attacked, and after the case got reported to the police six days later, they decided to arrest Aminata for planning the entire thing. Aminata was held in police custody for two days, after which they decided to release her because they couldn't find sufficient evidence. The case looked like it was slipping away until a vital piece of information got released that changed everything. The police took on a thorough investigation into the case, and that's when they realized the SIM card on Hamarai's phone belonged to the former Barcelona left back, Eric Abadal. They brought Abadal in for questioning, and the news got leaked that Abadal had been having an affair with Hamarai. I gotta pause here because all of this stuff is blowing my mind. Anyways, getting back to it, the attackers were alleged to have accused Hamarai of sleeping with married men, and to make it worse, Abadal admitted the affair to his wife. Now, Abadal's wife, Hayat, immediately denied having anything to do with the attack, and the case was again put to sleep for a while. Both Hamarai and Amanita returned to training a few weeks later, and in contrast, while Amanita was seen by his heroes by locals, Hamarai was getting booed week in and week out. This scandal, coupled with other internal issues affecting in the club, like the Ole Nicole case, ruined the remainder of the PSG female team season. They lost out on the league to Lyon and crashed out of the Champions League. The police finally figured it was time that they reopen the case again, and after some deep digging, they arrested a man in May for connections to the attack, and three more in September, and once these four men got behind bars, they were waiting to deliver the shocking plot twist because a few weeks later, they had stunning news. Aminata was the one behind the attack. Whoa! The police bugged Aminata's phone, and after checking her Google search history, they found out that she previously searched for ways on how to break a kneecap and dangerous drug cocktails. It was slowly beginning to make sense now because Aminata and Hamurai were both central midfielders fighting for the same position at club and country. Aminata continues to deny the attacks after being released on probation, but with the evidence all pointing to her, this one just feels like a case of jealousy creeping into the game in totally inappropriate fashion. Now, that was exciting, but when it comes to getting pulses racing for the wrong reasons, no one does it better than Chloe Kelly. In the 2022 Women's Ural Finals, host nation England was up against Germany in a really tense match. With the scores deadlocked at 1-1, one one, the match seemed like it was destined to go to penalties when out of nowhere, Chloe Kelly scored to give England the lead. But with the goal being scrappy and a lot of confusion settling in, VAR got involved. And for a long time, it seemed like the goal wasn't going to stand until the final check was complete. And once Chloe realized that she had just made history, there was no stopping her. She legit took her top off. That isn't a common sight in the women's game, and even though it was inappropriate, this one was pure emotions, and she was coming off the back of a career-threatening ACL injury, so you know what, Chloe? I'm gonna let this slide. Just hope she doesn't keep taking her shirt off every time she scores, or she could make the list of the top five shocking celebrations that have been banned forever in the next video.